the declaration itself as two-sided. It was a moral commitment, but an ambiguous one to Jews and Arabs. It had no legal standing. The public act of recognition to Zionism was to be formalized after Churchill presented to Parliament the Churchill White Paper in 1922. That paper was submitted to the League of Nations in Geneva and approved. And as Weizmann put it, it represented the Magna Carta of liberation, a decisive event in Jewish history. And it gave Zionism the legal right to move towards statehood. And that in turn led to the establishment of the State of Israel following the United Nations Resolution of 1947. So after 2,000 years of persecution, the Jews were at last to return home. I'm a strong believer in Zionism, the Declaration, and the State of Israel. Thank you very much. It's important to understand that the idea of Zionism, of, of the return to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, really began um, on that day in 70 AD when Titus Caesar uh, stormed the temple, stormed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, burnt Jerusalem, massacred everybody within it, and, um, and expelled the Jews. Fortunately for the Jews, in the 17th century, um, a Hebraist uh, sense arose among the Protestants who believed that in order to fulfill ancient biblical um, uh, prophecies, the Jewish return was essential for the second coming of Christ. The Jews were lucky that this miracle, that the miracle of Balfour was in many ways the result of the unique situation in 1917. So a combination of vast and long historical longings with, with a just longing for home and a combination of perfect political and military timing created the environment for the giving of the Balfour Declaration.